This is my phone, a Samsung Galaxy S9. It can shoot in 4K video. So why did I buy a camcorder that only shoots in HD? It's by the way the camera I'm shooting on right now. So stay tuned and I will show you everything you need to know about this camera and why I use it instead of my phone. Before we start this video I want to clear up one thing. There's two versions of the same camera. You have the Legria and you have the Vixia. The Legria is for the PAL standard and can record in 25 and 50 fps and has two record formats, AVC HD and MP4. The Vixia is for NTCS standard. The Vixia records in 24, 30 and 60 fps and can only record in MP4. Vixia also has an external microphone input that Lagria do not have. So with that out of the way, let's dive in and look what we have in the box, shall we? So this is quite a nice box actually. We have an HDMI cable included, that's really nice. And as I said earlier, this is the Legria and it's for, I believe it's, yeah, right there, PAL. So let's take a look what's in the box. And the first thing is a manual and a quick guide, I believe, and some paper. It's actually quite easy camera to understand, but uh, it's nice to have if there are some question marks later on. So if we open the box, we have the power cord uh, and mine is for the European standard. Uh, we have a power brick that's quite small actually. Then we have a battery that's quite small too. I believe uh, the battery time on this camera is 3 hours and 15 minutes for this battery. Then we have a uh, I believe this is a computer cable, yes, a USB cable if you want to transfer the files that way. Then we have an HDMI from Mini and this goes into the camera and this goes into the external monitor or TV. Quite nice. Of course we have the camera itself. Let me just get this wrapping and this box out of the way. So just to summarize, we have the camera, we have the battery, we have the power brick, we have the HDMI cable, the USB cable, the power cord and the quick guide. So let's jump to the camera itself. First of all we have to pop in this battery, just slide in and if you want to remove it you press down this and just remove the battery. So on the front we have the cover and on the side we have the latch for open it. And on the front we have two microphones and the audio is quite good actually right from these microphones. And on the top we have the speaker and the zoom. The zoom I believe is uh, 32 for just the optical and if you use the hybrid mode you can get up to 57 in the zoom. And I believe that this camera also can get up to 1140 times with digital zoom but uh, it's not gonna be that great of a quality so I use stick to 32 on this camera and if we look at this side we have the on and off button for the recording and underneath we have the one quarter of a thread on this side we have the three inch uh, touch screen and you're gonna do the most of the settings right on here we have two physical buttons right here uh, one for on and off and one for the playback then we have this slot and this is where you put the SSD card. Then we have the AV out, the HDM out and USB. And note that on this version, the Legria, there's no mic input, but on the Vixia there are. That's the bummer for this version, but uh, eh, it's okay anyway. So that's the rundown on the outside of this camera. Just a quick thing about this SD card. I got a micro SD card, 64 gig, I believe. The maximum is 128, but 64 is working. Do get the full SD card and not the micro SD card, because when I got this the first time, I had some problems with the camera recognizing the card, and I had to change this adapter to a finder adapter that works, and I believe it's so many contacts from the micro SD to the SD 
than from the SD through the camera. Get the full SD card if you can. Let's power it on. And if you go into the little house, you can change the re record setup. If you go in on other settings, if we go into, I believe that one, and we go down, initialization, press the button and you can format your SD card for the first time. And this is also where you delete the whole card. If you want to delete just one clip, you have to go into the playback and do it that way. So right now this camera is on auto and I usually shoot on auto because I get the best picture quality when I'm doing that. But there are different modes. So if you press icon right up in the left corner, so you have baby mode, you have auto mode, you have highlight priority, you have cinema mode uh, with some filters, you have standard cinema, you have vivid, you have cool, you have sepia and you have old movie. Then you have the scene mode. Scene mode is like auto but instead of uh, the camera choosing the scene you can lock a scene that you want to have. So like portrait, you can have sport, you can have night mode, you can have snow, you can have beach, sunset low light condition and spotlight and firework okay yeah uh, so that's quite neat and of course you have the p mode that stands for programmable and this is where you can change the most on the camera so if you get the p mode you can go into this icon and here if you scroll down you can change exposure white balance and focus and you cannot do this in auto. In auto the camera has full control. Uh, so this is the most you can control if you have it in P. So that's the basic rundown on this camera. And from here on I will use the internal microphone on this camera just so you can hear how it sounds. If you're gonna shoot with this camera, especially indoors, you need great light. I cannot stress this enough. What I have, it's okay. It's a couple of work lights that I've bought for cheap. It's not a good light setup. But I think this camera is doing a great job and of course I have the window. It's cloudy outside so it's not that bright. But with that and this, it's quite good. But you need to know what you're gonna use it for and you need to have a good lighting setup. You have to work around the limits of this camera. And if you look at Canon, Sony and other camera brands, this is the best camera you're gonna get for the price. Another thing that you may need to know is that this camera is gonna focus on the brightest object in the shot. So for me, my face is the brightest, so I'm gonna always be in focus. I know that some on the YouTube had problems, and what I can see is that the person at the background is uh, equally lit, and that's not gonna work. This camera gonna struggle in that environment. You need to light yourself or the object you're gonna shoot and want to have focus on. And another thing that this camera do not have is depth of field, so that's a bummer too. You can walk around that if you are outside and use an empty filter, but inside, mm, this is what it's gonna look like. So you just have to be real with this camera and what it's gonna perform, but it's 200 bucks. What do you expect? It's quite, actually quite nice if I have to say it myself. But my cell phone, the Samsung S9, it's gonna have much better quality and more crisp of a picture. Yes, it's true, but it's gonna be more hassle to use it. I can on this just press record and away I go. As long as I have the power cord in, I can sit here to my memory is full. Another thing that I like with this camera instead of my phone is that this looks more real. I think the phone uses more software to make a good image and this camera uses more of a lens to make the image that it produces. I'm gonna stick with this camera as my A camera and I'm gonna use my phone as a B camera and that's gonna be perfectly fine. And with that said, if you do not have the money to spend, don't buy this camera, use your phone. You can get by with the phone, but for convenience, this camera is great. And with that said, thank you for watching and I hope you enjoyed this video. If you liked it, press the thumb button and drop a comment down below and tell me what you think about this camera. And of course, do not forget to subscribe if you want to see more of me. So, see you in the next one. Thank you for watching.